All right, Stocktwits, here we are at CES 2026 with Dr. Ali Kashani, who's the CEO of Serve Robotics. I feel like robots has been one of the big themes for CES this year, and I want to congratulate you on 2,000 right. Serve Robots out there. Thank you. How close are we to a world in which the delivery, right, by a Serve robot is cheaper and more profitable uh, than a human in a car? I think we are pretty close. So obviously, it, you need scale for the economics to work. Right. We've gone from less than 100 robots last year, at the beginning of last year, to 2,000 by the end of last year. So that's like a 20x increase in the numbers. So if we keep scaling at, at this level, I think we are going to get to a point where you're going to have profitable, you know, positive unit economics uh, deliveries. And it's not just about the economics. Of course, that's important. But it's also about the fact that it makes cities better. It makes, uh, you know, it makes this choice of having food delivered to you, available to more people, uh, to more restaurants, uh, reduces accidents, emissions, all that. To me, it's like there's, there's a lot more to it than just uh, profitability. How do you guys decide whether you are going to enter a new market? Right now, you're in six markets, including my own in Chicago. Uh, is it sort of Uber Eats data? What, what is the equation by which you decide where you're going to go? And do you have new markets already on, on deck? Oh, absolutely. There is, there is a lot coming up. So the, the, the way it works is, first of all, there are a lot of options. Basically, any city, it doesn't even have to be a big city, you, you, they're going to need robots. Usually, the way cities are you know, uh, situated, you have some business districts, even if it's just a few streets with restaurants. And then nearby, there are a lot of people who live there with like, you know, higher density. Any, any even small city can use a robot. So the question really is, where do we want to go next that makes uh, the most sense? So one of the things we do, we talk to Uber. We talk to, and they've been working with us for years, we talk to DoorDash, who is a new partner. Mm. Uh, we also look at the regulatory space. Are they friendly? Are they interested in this? Or are they hesitant? Because we don't want to go where we are not welcome. There's a lot of options for us, right? And then other things like, you know, is this something we are familiar with? Can be, how much are we pushing the envelope? Uh, for example, we're not going somewhere where there is like snow uh, many, many months a year because we are less familiar with snow having grown up in LA basically, wow. right? But over time, we're going to get there. Luckily, Chicago is getting a little bit warmer yeah. these days. Uh, I think it's in the 50s this week. Yes. Uh, you have some pretty big names in your corner. Uh, Uber, I just mentioned, mm -hmm. NVIDIA, of course. Are these kind of partners, in silent partners in the background? Or how much are they involved in sort of building the brains behind Surf? I like to think they're more than silent. If you watched Jensen's uh, keynote yesterday, he mentioned us three times. So that was pretty cool. I believe he said he loves us. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take We're going to quote you on that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Uber has been very engaged. NVIDIA has been very engaged. NVIDIA provides the chips inside the robots. We have multiple NVIDIA chips in there. We are always talking to them about what's coming next. What are we working on? What are they working on? How can we really push the envelope for the entire industry? together. Same thing with Uber. They are investing heavily into autonomy. If you see how much, uh, you know, how many announcements they have made, how many rides are being completed in various autonomous modes. So they're, they're very active. I think you're going to keep seeing that trajectory because as, you know, Jensen said yesterday, as Uber said, robotics is kind of how autonomy is going to be delivered or how uh, goods are going to be delivered uh, in the future. You know, we are at CES where there's plenty of companies that are early stage while there are big, obviously, tech giants out here as well. How do you prevent the sidewalk from getting even more crowded? In other words, what is your competitive advantage? What is your secret sauce to keep a large tech company from just going out there and taking over the space? I mean, look, if you think about every startup ever created, they have had this moment where they're a small company compared to the big legacy companies out there, and everybody asks the question, why is nobody else coming in and kind of taking your lunch? The fact yeah, is, yeah. they have their own opportunities. The big opportunity, they're going after foundation models. They're going after, they're, there's so many needs and not enough engineers to go after these opportunities. And at the end of the day, I think we have built so much know-how, so much skill set. We have been working on this for eight years. If someone wanted to get uh, involved, they're probably better off working with us and building that future and making the pie bigger rather than trying to go replicate what's already been created. Created because everybody wants to do it faster. They don't want to go and spend five years recreating something. So I think ultimately that question always, anybody with infinite money can recreate what you created. But there's a reason why startups still exist. It's because once you invested that uh, time and effort, people benefit from working with you rather than wanting to kind of, uh, you know, uh, replicate what you've done. Okay. You've provided guidance of 10x revenue for 2026. How close are you to unit profitability in 2026? 
that's a very good question that I now need to go is to a, my database. Is and what have we said and what have we not said? So okay. um, I, I don't believe we would have unit economics profitability this year, but we have the kind of um, roadmap to it, as in it's within line of sight. And a, a bit of it is a question of do you want to grow or do you want to get the economics to work? Right. And sometimes right. they conflict. I feel like right now, it makes sense to to get the most amount of data as fast as possible because that's how you're going to get to be the dominant player in your space is by having more robust collecting more data training your ai right so right. it may not be the right moment to just really focus on profitability look at uber and others it took them like 10 years to get there yeah. but it was a good reason they had to dominate first before they got their economics to work but at any point you can reverse course and decide okay now it's time we're gonna like this year become profitable i think we could do that if we decide to but right now i'm not sure if that's the moment for yeah, it. with uh, robots, it, it is about the data yeah. in many ways, and it takes time. Last question here, you know, as I mentioned, Serve Robotics is in my home market, and there have been some funny interactions I've seen people with the robots on the sidewalk. Sure. Is there one that stands out to you, one that's particularly memorable? I mean, we live in a social media world, and those interactions are yeah. kind of part of the whole holistic uh, uh, product, oh, I right? Have so, I have so many. I have so many stories. I've had uh, <laughs> like. People drawing pictures of the robots that that looked so awesome that like you know a local artist and we we would hang it in the office. We have had people who tattoo the robots in their body. People we don't know. We had children. Children love these robots. I had a request yesterday. Someone's like, "Do you have a small toy version?" We send them a Lego kit uh, okay. to kind of you know they they have That's a great. three year old who's obsessed with the robots. There's so many people who kiss the robots. People who uh, it's just it, it's really fun to see those interactions. Actually, it's very energizing. Kiss the robots, huh? Sounds like a new vertical uh, for Serve Robotics. We're not breaking any news no, here. We're not going uh, Dr. Kashani, thank you so much. Thank you so much.